the preliminary understanding of God is that he is a very strict father who will punish his children in various ways if they disobey. Therefore, in most religions, especially in the Western world, they are trained to fear God. Because without that fear, most people will not turn to God and they will continue on with their irreligious activities. But out of fear, they may do good. But as we become more, more cultured in spirituality, we understand the beauty of God, the sweetness of God, the love of God. Krishna means all attractive. How many people are attracted to fear? Krishna is all attracted because his beauty, his kindness, his love, frees us forever from all fear. It is said that the oceanic obstacles and sufferings that are inherent within this material existence, they are reduced in size to the quantity of water contained within the small hoof print of a calf for one who takes shelter of Mukunda or Krishna. Krishna's beauty, Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's qualities, Krishna's personality are so infinitely attracted so magnetic to the soul that it is, easy, it is natural to give up irreligious activities. In fact, param drishtvani vartate, when we experience the higher taste of Krishna's love, we're completely satisfied. We want to, the great souls, they simply want to serve Krishna. Lord Chaitanya prayed, Nada namna janamna sundarim kavitam vajagadisha kamaye, Mama janamani janmanishwari bhavatar bhakti rohaita kitvai. I don't care about wealth or beautiful women. I don't care about being famous or having followers. I don't even care for mukti, liberation. I just want to serve you, my Lord. I just want to please you, my Lord. And if you want me to take birth and birth and birth after birth in this world, I'm happy to do so. That is love. We can theoretically speak these things, but to really feel them is only possible if we're experiencing Krishna. Krishna is all attractive. And all of his pastimes, all of his beauty, all of his kindness, and all of his love, in fact, his entire abode, are all contained within his holy name. Golokera premadana harinam sankirtan. This means Goloka the highest realm of the spiritual world, the kingdom of God. The holy name has descended from there. 
And we learn from the scriptures what that means is in the spiritual world, everyone is chanting the names of the Lord and tasting the sweetness of the ecstasy of the Lord through his names. And that same name, God himself, has descended into this world. Bajahuremana Srinandanandana Abhaya Charanara Vindare Govinda Das, the poet, prays, My dear Lord, Srinandanandana, in worshipping you, I become fearless. Krishna Suryana Sam Maya Hoya Andakara. That Krishna is like light and ignorance is like darkness. When the sun rises, you don't have to make any separate arrangements to remove darkness. When Krishna rises in our hearts, there's no need for any separate arrangement. Nama Chintamani Krishna's Chaitanya Ras Vigraha. And Krishna has come in his name. If with a grateful heart and with an attitude of sincerely wanting to serve others and a life guided by spiritual masters who teach us the path of devotion, the path of real morality, when we chant the, the name of the Lord in that setting, Krishna attracts our hearts. And our dormant love of God, Prema Bhakti, awakens. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sajjaka Bunoi Sravanadi Sudhi Cheti Kodiye Udoi. Krishna Prem, love of God, is dormant within the heart of every living being. It is our essential nature. All the problems of this world, all the conflicts, is because people have forgotten that. Our minds and our senses have become so externalized that the treasure of love that is within us has been forgotten. If you forget something you have, it's as good as not having it. If you have a crore of rupees, but you forget where you put it, you'll be sleeping on the streets like everybody else on the streets. Although it's yours, Love of God is within our heart. That essence that is the source of eternal joy and pleasure. But we have forgotten. But by associating with holy people, living a grateful and humble life, and chanting God's names, that love is awakened. And what happens when love of God begins to awaken within our heart? It is so sweet, so satisfying. It gives us such relief that the quality of compassion awakens from our heart. And we want to share that love with others. Compassion is the natural byproduct of love. Compassion for the body, the mind, and especially the soul of others. It is a great gift that we've all been given, but each and every one of us have the free will to neglect it or utilize it accordingly. If you have a grateful heart when you receive a gift, then you can understand its value. But if you have an ungrateful heart, even if you're given something that's absolutely priceless, you cannot really understand its value. 
If you're hungry, you understand the value of food. If you're already overeating, and somebody gives you something more, ah, you cannot understand its value. So we must be hungry for Krishna and grateful. A hungry man will be grateful for whatever he or he is given. If we are hungry for Krishna, we will be grateful for whatever Krishna gives us. And we will learn to grow and learn to love through that situation. And in this way, that gratitude should extend to all aspects of our life. Srila Prabhupada was not only grateful to his guru and the saints, he was grateful to anyone who would help him. When he was living in the Bowery in New York City, people who were alcoholics, they're called Bowery bums, people who have no homeless people living in the streets, engaging in criminal activities to get enough money to somehow or other sustain their alcoholism. But Prabhupada was so kind to them. He was the only man on earth that gave them respect. And they would open the door for him. And Srila Prabhupada from, the, from his heart would say, thank you. And that's how he made hippies into happies. Because he had such deep appreciation for anyone who would accept anything that he was trying to give. Such a service attitude. He's asking nothing in return, he's only giving, and he's eternally grateful to anybody who simply accepts what he's giving. And when parents of the devotees that Srila, uh, who were following Srila Prabhupada would come before Prabhupada, he was so grateful to each and every mother and father for all they've done for their children, which ultimately brought them to the path of love of God. In fact, when Brahmananda Prabhu and Gargamuni Prabhu took initiation in 1966 in 26 2nd Avenue, their mother came to the ceremony. She didn't know anything about anything. She wasn't following any fault regulative principles. And she was sitting on a chair it was even higher than Srila Prabhupada. And when they came to get their japa mala, their beads, and take the vows of initiation before Srila Prabhupada would initiate them, he told them to go to their mother, bow down, and touch her feet with gratitude. Then you come back and take the beads from me. And in America, this kind of culture is not known. So they went and touched their mother's feet, bowed down. She was very embarrassed. They thanked her, and then they came back and Sri the Prabhupada initiated. And some time later, Brahmananda Prabhu explains, he went to visit his mother, he rang the doorbell, she opened the door, there was no one there. She looked around. Who rang the doorbell? Then she saw her son doing his dandavats on the ground. <laughs> she said, what are you doing, son? What will the neighbors think? And he said, my Guru Maharaj said, I must bow down to you whenever I come. <laughs> Through these incidents, Srila Prabhupada is, a, is teaching all of us how to be grateful. So today, in this beautiful, divine atmosphere, 
I would like to offer my gratitude to my dear father, to my spiritual father, and to all of you. <laughs>